Hi, my name is Mo Moody, and I'm running for Onondaga County Legislature District 15. And this is the Salt City Index, where we interview various influencers throughout the city of Syracuse, Onondaga County, a.k.a. Salt City. Now, this is an unbiased, neutral platform, and the views and the opinions shared by this guest may or may not be shared by me. Hi, everyone. My name is Mo Moody, and I'm running for Onondaga County Legislator District 15. Welcome to my series called the Salt City Index. Now, I have a special guest here with me today. Now, before I introduce my special guest, I want to tell a really quick story of the first time I met my guest. Um, it was not too long ago. It was during the summer during a jazz event, and I had my daughters with me. And he was handing out COVID uh, free exams in a bag of little knickknacks and whatnots in a bag. My youngest daughter walked over to him, and before she even had a chance to ask him, he was already giving him, she was already giving him, you know, like one of the bags. And I leaned over to my wife and said, I don't know who that guy is, but I know he's important. You know, and I never, I never actually like spoke to you at that point going forward. Then right. later, uh, I actually saw you at the Syracuse Community Choir where you were upstage, where my uh, oldest daughter was performing. And I said to my wife, like, hey, that's that guy again. You know what I mean? Like, I know he's important. Come to find out, I like to introduce my special guest. His name is Clifford, right? He also goes by Cliff, right? That's your is also is okay. And uh, he's one of the founders of, you know, is the founder of the OGs Against Violence and uh, has, does wonderful, amazing things within the community, works in an actual community center, gives back to children. It's been a light to the world and to this overall, you know, overall general scheme. So I like to introduce my special guest today. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Clifford Ryan, and I am the founder of OGs Against Violence, and that stands for Our Generation Against Violence, and it is a violence interruption organization that's specifically geared towards boots on the ground, going out into the community, interrupting violence such as shootings, stabbings, and fights. I do a variety of outreach, as far as the program is concerned as well, um, I do intervention, prevention, conflict resolution. Uh, um, I do presentations for schools and youth centers uh, throughout the city of Syracuse. Um, I'm community-based. Uh, I'm a 501c3 um, non-for-profit organization. Uh, I'm an advocate in the community, and it's an honor to be here on your show. I appreciate it. That's awesome. And for our viewers back home that may not know, what does OG stand for? OGs stands for Our Generation Against Violence. And that acronym came from the term old school. And um, out west in the California area, uh, they took that term and dubbed it original gangster. But the original term for the OG term was old school. So uh, that's where they came up with the older generation, OGD. And then the gang culture out there in LA took that term and dubbed it original gangster. But the term I wanted to represent was our generation or older generation mm -hmm. against violence. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, I got to ask you, what's top of mind? You know, you're an influencer, you know, like the whole part of this whole channel is to, you know, the interview influencers throughout the city of Syracuse. And I believe that you're one of them. So what's top of mind? Yes. So so what I do is I go out in the community and I reach out to high risk individuals, meaning individuals that do violence in our community and, um, you know, reach out to them from a perspective of, uh, you know, trying to enlighten them, trying to give them guidance. And from that effort, uh, over the past eight years, I've gained a rapport with the community um, and I've gained a respect with the community. So, so it began to increase respect wise and um, it, it became a thing where when I would come around that they would respect me enough not to do the violence. Um, there's been times when they have done violence around me, but 
99.9% of the time, it's embarrassing for them to do the violence around me. So um, I established a, a rapport with the community, respect-wise, to be able to go out there and stop violence um, as a whole. Stop and shooting. I stopped 44 shootings. Wow. I stopped 300 stabbings. And I stopped 1,082 fights, to be exact. And I kept track of that data for the purpose of showing that the organization's efforts um, can have an input and, and an impact um, um, as far as the community is concerned. That's amazing. That's 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 really, truly impressive. Um, you know, with your insight that you've been doing this for so long, you know, share with you really briefly, you know, um, I had a mentee that I was working with here in Syracuse that we developed into like a healthy relationship and we became really good friends and we were about to go into business together. Uh, his name was Mike. And um, unfortunately, last year he was shot down and killed uh, here in Syracuse yeah, in gun violence. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, but, you know, with that being said, with you having that boots on the ground, you know, administrative experience dating back for years, what do you think is the take that can be done now to kind of like stop violence currently? Well, let's let's let let's address that right there. We'll never be able to stop it permanently. Mm -hmm. But what you see me doing is the approach of trying to put a dent in it, trying to uh, bring the numbers down, trying to actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, stop shootings right and as you can see like i stated there earlier i stopped 44 right now you think about all of the shootings that happen right each year i will stop in 10 shootings okay so what we have to do as a community is we have to put boots on the ground the uh, city officials have to put the resources behind the organizations Okay, such as mine um, um, and other organizations. And we don't need to have to go through a lot of the red tape, such as what we're going through right now, um, 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 to get funding from the violence reduction program that the mayor has put in place um, because they took and they made it. So you have to, our, you know, they made it the RFP. So we have to go through a mm -hmm. lot of uh, uh, mm -hmm. things to get the funding. But normally what you would do is um, you would have a uh, uh, um, impact from the organization. We would have it would have an impact from the organization mm -hmm. to a degree where um, if many organizations put their heads together and unite, we can we can come together and, and we can have a stronger impact. Now, we're not going to be able to stop all the violence. That's just a reality across the United States. But what we can do is we can continue to fight because there is no there's no option of quitting. OK, um, mm -hmm. um, we have to continue to fight against the violence in our community and different ways uh, uh, that we do. And, and, and you know. When when people start start talking about will there ever be a time when there will be no gun violence? There's never going to be a time when there's there's not going to be any gun violence. There's going to always be gun violence. But what we have to do is try to reduce those numbers, okay, and try to reduce the violence um, that we're going through and that we're dealing with in the future. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Totally makes sense. Um, you know, thank you for that insight. Uh, you know, I was looking into uh, some of the things that you've done, you know, in that vein of things that you're trying to like help and, and you know, exposure. I came across that you created a coloring book. Um, yes. Right. Could you yes. talk a little more about that for the people back home or the constituents that may not be aware of that? Right. So I had a coloring book illustrated by uh, uh, one of the board members, um, daughter, who is a pretty good artist. Hmm. And she took three unique stories that I faced while I was out in the community. Um, and we put that those stories together with the illustration uh, uh, of a coloring book. Uh, so it would be kid friendly and it's teaching kids how to stay away from high risk activity is teaching kids how to stay away from guns and is teaching kids what to do in situations where they may come across a gun. 
Okay. And, 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 the, and the, one of the stories I can tell you about real quick is about some kids playing in a park and he remembered the conversation that I had with them from walking in the community with my signs and letting them know, should you ever come across a firearm, what to do? And he happened to be in that situation, him and his friends. And, and mm -hmm. from that, he utilized the tools that I taught him. And he, he went and got his mom and his mom went and got the authorities and had the authorities come and remove the firearm rather than the kids playing with it and end up, you know, losing you know, one of their peers, um, you know, uh, uh, from, from yeah. you know, playing with the own gun. But the coloring book is very unique. Um, I'm proud of it. Um, when you give it a chance, um, you know, I want to make sure that I get you a copy of that right there so that you can see, you know, the illustration. It's got like a cartoon character of mm -hmm. me, uh, you know, in the coloring book and everything, you know, with the signs. And it shows me talking to the kids and everything like that. Um, and that these stories actually happen. Now, the last story in the com in, in the coloring book was modified because it was a tragic ending to the last story in which two two brothers were playing in their father's room and they came across the firearm and the one brother found the firearm and end up accidentally uh, taking his other brother's life. Uh, but in the, oh, yeah. com in, the, in, the, in the coloring book, I modified that story to where they went and got their father and, and they took the time to let their dad know that they had stumbled across the firearm and he took it and put it up and explained to the kids that he left it unattended and that that was a mistake and that they did the right thing by coming to get him so that he could secure the firearm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but the, I'm proud of the color book. Uh, and we have a, another one coming out soon with three more unique stories. Um, and I took those coloring books into the youth centers, into the schools. And I read those um, coloring books to the students and everything. And they were really impressed. And all the little, little kids love the coloring book. So when they see me, they want them coloring books, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I have some, some uh, backpack. Um, bags that I put a small, small package in it with the coloring book, a t-shirt and some crayons and some bracelets and, and you know, um, pass those out in the community to the kids and everything. That's awesome. That's amazing. I'm, I'm glad that you're yeah. doing that. That's, that's really, really noble of you. Um, Thank you. I know that you got started, you know, back in uh, 1999 due to, uh, you know, situation event in your past. You don't have to rehash that. Yes. Uh, then another situation in 2015, uh -huh. you know what I mean, launching like, you know, the organization. So you've been dealing mm -hmm. with like the youth since like the early 2000s, you know, till now, you know, like if you would like look back to the youth generation currently and then fast forward mm -hmm. the current time, have you seen any changes? And if so, how is that operating, how you're interacting with the community? Yeah, so so there have been some changes. Uh, um, the violence kind of increased uh, and and you know, understanding what our role is, is important to meet the demands of those changes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and, and we have to understand that um, they're not at our level as adults. And, and, and you know, the culture has, um, of violence has increased uh, tenfold um, uh, over the years. Um, and, 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 and it takes a special effort. So, so what I seen was a trend that, that, that spiraled a little bit more out of control. But, but what I also seen is that, you know, you can uh, make a difference if you put that effort in and you have to understand that times have changed mm -hmm. and you have to make your adjustment. That is the biggest thing for us as the older generation that we have to understand is we had to make that adjustment as, as far as what's going on in our communities today, as far as dealing with the youth and dealing with the culture uh, of those changes uh, that, that have uh, uh, been perpetuated in our community like that. I mean, you know, uh, uh, when you're talking to a young man, it's different than what it was when you and I were coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay. You mm -hmm. have to take a different approach. 
uh, 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 to, to approach and, and and I can give you an example of what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, if I'm talking to a young person of today uh, and there's a situation, my first my first comments to that person is, excuse me, young man, I don't mean no disrespect. OK, uh, uh, and that's to set the tone with him to, to establish a respect boundary. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and, and once you've established that respect boundary, then you proceed with uh, giving that guidance and you proceed with, uh, 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 you know, taking the approaches as far as, you know, you trying to uh, reach out to him uh, or her in that regard. It's very important that we understand that times have changed and things are different now. And we can't continue to say, hey, well, when I was in, when I was back in my day, this and back in my day, that sure it was like that because the culture was different. Mm-hmm. The culture is, is, is has changed now and we have to adapt to the changes that have been made. So that is how I approach, you know, the difference between what's going on. Um, from the youth back in the days as opposed to what's going on with them today. Right. Right. Very important. Very, very good insight. I appreciate that, you know, that in part, you know, sharing that information. Um, yes. You know, when you think about like cultural, like, you know, upbringing and you think about like kind of like the way things are, you know, it makes me think of a story that happened to me really quickly. Um, you know, my daughter, she competes in karate and we were down in Philadelphia in a karate tournament and, you know, full of energy and fighting and excitement. And we're on the drive back to Syracuse and I'm in Bronx, New York. I'm originally from Brooklyn, you know, but I've been in Syracuse since 99. But uh, uh, someone cut me off, wouldn't let me leave, the, you know, the off ramp to go upstate to leave. And then uh, the person was in a utility vehicle and drove by my car and then kicked my hit my car hit something with it you know i mean like with their hand or and then threw an object at my car so i pulled up behind them and uh that individual exited the vehicle and i immediately popped my seat belt because i'm from you know from brooklyn and i was like uh and he started screaming profanities at me and i'm like i'm going to engage this person in physical hand-to-hand combat but then my wife who's in the car with me with my children was like what are you doing (laughs) you know what i mean like and i'm like uh yeah what am I doing? You know, my wife was pregnant at the time, you know, with my son, we were expecting in a couple months, uh, right. I was going to run for, you know, political office. So I had a lot to lose. So I then calmed myself down and let the individual walk away. But looking back, even as an educated, uplifted individual, it was kind of like from a cultural standpoint, it's like that individual did everything to engage us into a hand to hand physical confrontation. So I had more things to lose. So I chose not to, I was level headed. From your your point of view, you're dealing with tons yes. of people within the community. With that mindset, there's information saying here in Syracuse, right, that a lot of the fighting is not drug related, but more of like community neighborhood versus neighborhood inner squabbling fighting. What are you seeing as like a common trend of like why this area has this unique statistic? Well, it's um every the short answer for that. Right. And I have to take that approach with it is everything from A to Z. And we start with uh, the poverty Mm -hmm. that we're facing uh, uh, with the influx of uh, uh, firearms that are coming into the community. Um, And and, you know, those two right off the top play a major role in why uh, we're dealing with what we're dealing with in a city such as our size um but uh not to you know make excuses um you know this just you know something that we have to understand that it takes um it's it's going to take a lot of effort to turn around but i see the the, the, the poverty aspects as a key component in what we're dealing with and what we're facing in our community. Um, and, you know, me understanding, you know, coming from it mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, being, being a product of it, uh, uh, how to get through it. I try to pass that on, um, you know, Every everybody's role in it has to be uh, uh, played um, properly from the 
ones who run the city, mm -hmm. all the way down to advocates such as you and I. Mm -hmm. Like you're running for our office. When you get in office, should you get in office, uh, your responsibility would be to, uh, uh, you know, get in there and, and, and make something happen to help better our community. Definitely. You know, and, and that's very important for those who get in positions of power to do things to help improve our community. Like I like I was on the Citizens Review Board. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm on the uh, I just got on the Youth Advisory Board for the city, oh, awesome. um, uh, uh, the Senior um, Advisory Board for the city. I work for Syracuse Parks and Recreation. OK, uh, I do a variety of community based work uh, here in the city um, um, that, that can help you know, uh, better our community. So, you know, there's a wide range of things that we're facing and that we're dealing with that are, are the cause, that are the root cause of what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have to continue, like I said earlier, we have to continue to, to fight strong, you know, to, to help improve on some of those conditions. And that's what I do. That's why I put boots on the ground. That's why I work the way that I work. That's why I move the way that I move mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. far as the organization is concerned. Um, I was just at the young man's vigil last night um, who got shot and killed over here on South Bath. And everybody out there was in a state of trauma. Yeah. So me being a leader in the community, what did I do? I took the floor. And I talked to the individuals and I, I calmed them down. And I said, look, here's what you're going to do uh, in this situation of grieving. You're going to channel your grieving into doing something positive in honor of the young man who just lost his life. Okay. And you heard a calm come over the crowd and, and everybody was looking and I was on the spot. You step up to your leadership role in your community, right? And when you're doing that, when you step up to your leadership role, you have to take on that responsibility, right? Correct. And, and I want I want my community to hold me accountable, mm -hmm. okay? Because there's no, there's no straddling the fence mode when it comes down to advocating in the community or doing what you're supposed to do in the community. Either you're going to do right or you're going to do wrong, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Anything that, you're straddling the fence with that's in between is a, is fate. And I, I want my community to hold me accountable for my actions. So that's why I move the way that I do. And that's why I do the things that I do. I'm not perfect, but I'm saying I'm all about doing what I do 100%. And I'm not perpetuating anything that I'm speaking out against. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. And that's very important. No, that's, that's very important. That's very, very wise of you. You know, like sharing that information and giving that calm to that in that group is can make a difference. You know, so you know, yes, I appreciate that. You know, we Absolutely. need more people like you, you know, in the community stepping up and doing that. Uh, you know, having like neighborhood bonds and community bonds is going to be, you know, very crucial, you know, and key. Um, there's a recent study that's coming out, you know, highlighting how Syracuse has this issue called like a, a food island. I don't know if you've heard of this concept before, like due to poverty yeah. in different situations and lack of food public. Deserts. Yeah, and food deserts as well. It's another acronym yeah. that's being used to it as well, you know, where they don't have access to public transportation and sidewalks aren't developed and I don't own a car. So I can only kind of eat what's around me. So there's a lot of individuals in Syracuse eating out of dollar stores or out of like bodegas or corner stores and they don't have All access right. to like fresh food, you know, like in Whole Foods or Wegmans, you know, organic. Um, and then these health issues, because we know genetically Syracuse people are very strong, but we're seeing right. a spike in health issues then kind of roll into mental health. And then there's been a tie of mental health with, you know, with violence. Um, I was wondering just as your organization or just you as an individual, have you seen or heard anything about this and given this any thought and how to maybe help your efforts for like those root cause type scenarios? Yes. What is your take? Absolutely. Um, I, I volunteer, you know, on several levels of, uh, uh, you know, uh, working with individuals in the community who are out there feeding the homeless and who are out there, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving, distributing resources uh, to community uh, um, uh, individuals who um, are, are dealing with 
uh, some of the poverty that you're speaking on, um, um, also with the mental health, took a course on mental health first aid. Mm. Um, so I'm trained in that as well. Uh, you know, working um, with the other organization that I work with, which is a COVID awareness um, organization, uh, we put together a food pantry. I mm. mean, um, you have several other food pantries in the community um, um, who are uh, uh, distributing food, uh, who are trying to help individuals who are struggling to make ends meet. And, and 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 different things you know i'm only i happen to skip away from it myself um in that regard um i never take you know my blessings for granted um and and try to give back you know to the community in that regard so uh you know there's there's like uh there's an organization called uh we rise above the street mm -hmm. um he feeds the homeless um every saturday uh um, he's uh, uh established himself uh here in the city of syracuse he's based out of uh chicago um his name is alameen muhammad and then there's several other organizations that um, um are addressing those needs as well mm. uh, not too long ago i saw a news interview uh with you talking uh about i believe about safer streets and um mm -hmm. it looked seemed to be a little bit like one-sided Maybe you didn't get a chance to get your voice out 100%. Now, looking back after the fact, now the dust is settled. Any thoughts or reflections on that interview? Yeah, so 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 basically, the mayor put together a violence reduction uh, program. And he tapped into several organizations to be involved with that. And uh, he appointed uh, a special uh, individual to head that program who is Pastor Latif here in the city of Syracuse. Now, when we went in front of the safety committee here, the Common Council Safety Committee, mm -hmm. uh, there was questions on how that was gonna take place. And he explained to them that they were gonna use resources as an incentive to reach out to some of the high risk individuals. Well, um, the media got a hold of that and started saying that um, Syracuse was going to pay gang members to stop doing violence, which is not the case. The incentive is to offer individuals an avenue of resource um, that they might not otherwise have, as opposed to, you know, that individual taking a firearm and going out there and doing something negative to get it. We are offering them. Uh, an incentive to get involved with the different programs that we have here in the city, such as my organization, because I'm going to be doing violence interruption and conflict resolution. I'm going to be training them how to handle situations uh, uh, and, and how to stop situations uh, uh, in the community. Uh, you know, people had this big misconception about the program um, and, and uh, you know, uh, I was telling people the same thing is like I'm going to say right now. Do your research on the program, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then you will understand that it's not about paying somebody. It's about encouraging an individual through guidance and through uh, a, a, a structured program to help that individual turn his life around. Now, should that individual step outside the boundaries of that and end up finding yourself back in trouble, that individual is going to have to face the consequences of that right there. Mm -hmm. And they've identified, I think, like to start off 50 individuals mm -hmm. who um, they feel is high, high risk that they want to, um, you know, work with. So uh, as the soon as soon as the program is set up, um, we will um, take the uh, or, uh, program and begin implementing it here in the city of Syracuse. Uh, they're looking at a, a soft start date of uh, June or July to start the program. Um, organizations such as myself are setting up right now. Um, and when I had went on, on uh, Fox News, uh, the news uh, anchor 
uh, had brought a former, uh, I guess he was a former gang member, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he was he bought into the, what that guy was saying, and he was saying that they, those kids are just going to take the money and go buy drugs, but that's not the case, okay? Um, and the, the, the money that's going to be offered is not, you understand, for the, them, them to take and go do negativity with it. And it's not going to, you know, be based on um, just giving somebody something. It's going to be based on that individual's participation as far as the program is concerned. Um so if that individual doesn't participate in the program, then he won't receive that incentive. Awesome. And it's not a lot of money, mm-hmm. you know, but they were trying to make it seem like, you know, someone's trying to pay gangs not to shoot somebody and different things like that right there, you know. Um, but that's, you know, there's, there was a lot of false information pertaining to the program that um, I wanted to uh, clear up and, and um, let that let them individuals know to do your research as far as the program is concerned before you judge it. Next question I have on, you know, top of my mind is that I'm looking into your past, uh, Cliff, you know, and I saw that about five years ago, you were talking about getting a white van that you would use to uh, get into the community, you know what I mean? And like put like uh, your OGs against violence, you know, logo onto it to help like be like, an, you know, help disrupt and get and like an eyesore, you know, can you tell me more about that project and whatever came of that, you know, five years so, later? So, so I was never able to get that project off the ground, but I did purchase a vehicle. So now I'm mobile and All right. All right. instead of walking, instead of walking the city, I patrol the city and I'm in a black uh, Subaru Crosstrek mm. 2023. And, um, I carry my signs in the vehicle with me, and whenever I'm riding through the city, I, I ride through the city just like I was walking through the city uh, with my signs. And whenever I see, I stop in the areas, get out, engage, you know, the individuals uh, the same way I do, I used to when I was walking. And and I can tell you that this, people actually miss me out there. Right. And they was like, man, where you been? You know, we haven't seen you in a while, you know, and I'm explaining to them that now I have a vehicle and I'm driving the areas mm. instead of walking, walking in the areas. Yeah. So um, but I still would like to bring that into fruition um, if, you know, I'm able to obtain the proper resources through the organization to, to be able to make that happen. like. To, 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 we have a violence interruption training program mm-hmm. and we're about to um, put that uh, training program um, in effect in the community and everything. And, uh, um, you know, I have individuals, uh, uh, you know, become a part of it. Um, and I spoke to some individuals last night at the individual who say they want to be a part of it because of what they're facing and what they're dealing okay. with. Um, but um, I definitely want to bring that van into uh, mm. existence, you know, mm. once once I have the right, proper resources to do that. All right. Perfect. Yeah, uh, definitely makes sense. Um, so, you know, talking about transportation uh, and moving around, I mean, I've heard and done some research. You've been very active, like in Highway 81. I was just wondering mm. if you wanted to share any like insight on on that and just for the viewers back home. Yeah. So, so, so I have said before that I don't think that that project is going to take place because of all of the things that it's going to require to come into existence, meaning that they have to do a lot and it's going to cause a lot of chaos in the city gridlock as far as traffic is concerned it's going to be hard for them to achieve the um 81 project and i've always said that i don't think it's going to happen um they may prove me wrong but i do know that if they do when they begin tearing down the highway and different things like that it's going to create a problem for the city 
as far as traffic is concerned, as far as the environment is concerned, yeah. um, people's health on 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 the line. We got a hospital right there in the area. Uh, you already know from 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 the history of them building what they built and 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 the effect that it's had on uh, the people that live in the bricks and the pioneer homes. Um, so uh, my whole thing is, you know, for them to uh, try to find the best solution that they can, but at the same time, make sure or that it's going to be beneficial for those who live in the community, uh, uh, healthy for the community, mm -hmm. um, and, and that jobs uh, uh, will be given to the community should, should, it, should it come into fruition. You know, um, should the project come into fruition that that it, it benefits the community and the way that they're saying that it's going to benefit the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so I want to share a quick story, um, if I can. It was back on a Halloween this mm -hmm. past this past year, and uh, mm -hmm. surprisingly, I was walking around in my neighborhood with my dog and my family, and we saw a house on fire. Um, Cliff, mm -hmm. you, may, you may not be aware or not, but um, I'm actually a survivor of a house fire as well. Uh, back in 2019, uh, we lost everything. Yeah. Like, I mean, like everything in the Sorry house. Yeah, this happens. You know what I mean? And uh, I lost my car too. Car melted, you know, completely. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, only had the clothes on my back. You know, I was able to, you know, pick myself back up. But on Halloween, yeah. I was walking in my neighborhood. I saw one of my neighbor's houses on fire. And one of the things I, I noted was that the fire department got there really quick, like really quick. But since I already had a fire and I was watching it happen in lifetime, I was like, I don't think it's enough. Come to find out, um, it actually was your home. You know what I mean? And we are neighbors, mm -hmm. you know, like we live two blocks from each other. And right. uh, not harping on the negative part, but more of the positive side, what I really liked is that you said something loosely quoted that, you know, you kind of got out and cried out all your situations that you needed there and then. And then you, you know, now you've moved on, you know what I mean? As in you're now rebuilding and is really key right. of like that mental mindset, you know, that was very unique because I had the same mentality. It's like, it's only material things, you know, and I'll build myself back up and keep going forward. Um, and you've started like a GoFundMe page and, you know, what's your take as someone is going through that in lifetime as a community figure? What's your, you know, what's your side on that? If you wanted to talk about it. Yeah. I, I, um, I'm thankful that, you know, um, no one was home at the time. And like I said, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that I kept a positive attitude um, in that regard. Um, I was able to go in after the fire and salvage some of the stuff uh, that I had um, originally thought I had done. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was able to make a full recovery and I want to thank the community uh, for the outpour of donations that helped uh, me get back on my feet in that regard. Um, um, and 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 I, you know, I'm very thankful because I didn't know what I was going to do. I still had my jobs and everything like that, but I was going to have to, you know, uh, rebuild, you know, from the ground up. Since then, um, I've made a full recovery. I've been staying with uh, uh, my uh, girlfriend and we got together and decided to uh, put together a uh, uh, some 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 resources to to uh, uh, possibly purchase a home mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everything like that. Um, as, as I said earlier, I was able to buy a vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, take a, a portion of, of the donations and, and go buy a vehicle, which helped me out tremendously because um, it had been a, quite quite some time since I had a vehicle. Um, um, and, you know, yeah, um, I just was thankful that everybody made it out alive mm -hmm. and uh, no one got hurt. Um, material items, like you said, can be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I immediately began the push forward, you know, and when you're going through something like that devastation, um, uh, you have to find an avenue of positivity. And, you know, I just, you know, I'm a strong minded individual. And, you know, I wanted to make sure that 
I continue to uh, represent that. Um, I'm human. I felt that I hurt in pain, um, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but as I stated, you know, uh, the community support came right on time when I needed it because it showed me that the community cares about me. And there were times when I would be walking out there in that hot sun with my signs, thinking nobody gave a damn. But this tragedy uh, uh, with the fire showed me that they care. Um, And the outpouring uh, through the donations um, spoke volumes. And I'm thankful to the community. Thank you so much for all that you did. Uh, you know, and helping me recover from the fire and everything, because it was I was able to save some of my accolades mm-hmm, that were mm-hmm, given mm-hmm. to me from the community mm-hmm. and everything. You know, uh, those were important to me. I went in there and dug those out, and uh, you know, cleaned them up. And you know, I'm proud to say I saved a lot of them. That's good. I saved a lot of them. Yeah. So it meant a lot to me to save and to salvage what I was able to salvage that was important. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and, and even clothes wise, sneakers and different things like that right there. So, yeah, you know, I'm glad that I, I made a full recovery awesome. as far as that's concerned. Awesome. Glad to hear that. You know, someone who's gone through it myself, you know what I mean? Like, it's not easy. You know what I mean? Especially when you have yeah. other people responsible for, you know, so. Uh, but thank you. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely appreciate a lot of the undertones that you said is a lot about community and, you know, having like that mm-hmm. right mentality and mindset. Um, it's definitely yes. crucial, and I'm glad that the community rose, you know, stage. And I believe your GoFundMe page is still up, right? Currently, right? So, I, mean, I think it's. I think it, it may still be up, but okay. I don't think. I, I I don't know. I don't think any more funds are being uh, yeah. sent to yeah, it. Um, if, okay. I, if I'm not cool. mistaken, I haven't checked it in a while. Okay. But okay, but um, you made a full recovery. Awesome. Well, with yeah. community and said, you know, and digressing a little bit more, you know, like if you had like a magic ball, right, or a magic wand, right, and you can influence like any future politicians <laughs> like me you know what i mean like yes. what yes. would you want to change you know from like a le- legislative like point of view because like you've been in the ground you've, you've seen a lot was going on what would you want to change i would want i would want the resources that are coming into the city mm-hmm. to be used properly for what they are being given to the city for, mm. right? More um, for an example, the aquarium situation. Mm-hmm. I felt like that could have that could have been something that could have been dealt with later, okay? Uh, we were dealing with a lot in our community. Um, so so I would encourage anyone running for office that is yourself or, or anybody else who um, have those aspirations um, to uh, uh, do what you're supposed to do when you get in office. They asked me to run for county, I think it was county legislature Mm -hmm. uh, um, against uh, um, uh, Mr. Garland, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I I felt like it wasn't my time to to, to put my hat in. Mm -hmm. Uh, Eventually, that's something that I may look into in the future. Um, I know that I'm qualified, but I wanted to make sure my T's were crossed and my I's were dotted before I put my hat into the uh, 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 arena as far as, um, you know, getting into the political spectrum here in the city of Syracuse. But just encouraging individuals that are in office or that that, that inspire to be, be, become uh, 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 politicians or, or, or run for office to get in there and do what you say you're going to do um, and not just collect your paycheck and go home. Uh, uh, that's very important, you know, so, so, you know, with you running, you have an obligation uh, to, 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 to do what you say you're going to do or the people, people, the people are going to know, you know, and, and, and I, I say to people all the time, you know, be careful who we put in office because, you know, we got to live, we have to live with that, you know, once we've cast that vote, you know, um, so, you know, just, you know, from, from a political standpoint, you want people to do the right thing 
you know, when they get in a position of political power, you know, they need to, they need to do what they say they're going to do. One of the reasons why I'm running. <laughs> One of the reasons why Absolutely. I'm running. Yeah, you know, appreciate Appreciate you. So as we're coming to a close, um, mm-hmm. final thoughts, you know, last minute messages, you know, like if just your chance to like to reach out and get your message heard out, you know, to a broader scale, closing thoughts. So, so I just want to, you know, enlighten my community on, you know, continuing to uh, uh, make that strong effort, you know, to help our community improve, um, um, stand up together, united we stand, divided we fall. When you take one fist and you put one fist together and you in unison, you form strength. So during the protest, I was saying one fist, we stand together, united we stand, divided we fall. Mm-hmm. Just unite as a community and 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 stand up together. That's that's my message. Well, I appreciate your time. You know what I mean? I enjoyed conversating with you. It was an honor, you know, and very humbled and grateful, you know, to have you on, you know, this series, you know, the Salt City Index. Uh, yes. you know, it's phenomenal opportunity where I give like a non-biased opportunity for influencers like yourself to kind of share their thoughts and insights, you know, to the greater community in District 15 and Onondaga County and Syracuse as a whole. So once again, thank you, Clifford Ryan. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Blessings to you, brother.